From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm coming to you from our Boston area studio and I'm happy to welcome to the program someone we've known for many years, but a first time on the program, Priyanka Sharma. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Stu. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And Priyanka, uh, let, let's not bury the lead or anything. Uh, <laughs> the reason we're talking to you is the news. Uh, you, you've got a new job, uh, but in an area that you know really well. Uh, so we've known you through the, the cloud native communities uh, for a number of years. Uh, we, we see you at the shows. Uh, we see you online. Uh, so uh, happy to you know, share with our community. You are now uh, the general manager of the CNCF. So congratulations so much on, uh, on the job. Thank you so much. I am so honored to have this opportunity and I can't wait to work even more closely with the cloud native community than I have already. Uh, I mean, as you said, I've been involved for a long time. Um, I actually just saw on my LinkedIn today that uh, 2016 was when my, uh, you know, conversation with within the CNCF started. Uh, I was then working on the open tracing project, which was the third project to join the foundation. Uh, and like CNCF had started like in 2015, so it was all very new. We were, uh, we were in conversations and it was just such an exciting time. And that, that just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then with GitLab, I serve on, served on, I actually still serve until the 31st on the board. So, and now this, so I'm very, very excited. Yeah, well, right. So you were a board member of the CNCF, but Priyanka, if you go back even further, we, we look at, you know, how did CNCF start? It was all around Kubernetes. Where did Kubernetes come from? It came from Google. And when I dug back far enough in, into your CV, uh, I, I found Google on there too. So maybe just give us a little bit of your <laughs> career arc um, and, you know, what you're involved with for, for people that don't know you from all these communities and events. Sure, absolutely. So my career started at Google in um, Mountain View, and I was on the business side of things. I worked with AdSense products, um, and around, around that same time, I had a bit of the entrepreneurial bite. So uh, the bug bit me, and I um, I first joined a startup uh, that was acquired by GoDaddy later on, uh, and then I went off on my own, and uh, that uh, that was a very interesting time for me because that was when I truly learned about the power of open source. One of the products that uh, me and my co-founder were building was an open source time tracker. And I just saw the momentum on these um, communities. And that's when the dev tools love started. Uh, I started get, and then I got involved with the heavy bit industries, uh, which is an open source, uh, which is an accelerator for dev tools. There, I met so many companies that were um, either in the cloud space or just general other kinds of dev tools, uh, advised a few, ended up joining Lightstep, which uh, where the founders, they, uh, them and a few community members were the creators of the open tracing standard, got heavily, heavily involved in that project, jumped into cloud native with that, um, was a project, you know, contributor, organizer, educator, documentarian, all kinds of things, right? For two plus years and then GitLab with uh, the board membership. And that's how I saw actually the governance side, you know, until then it had all been the community, the education, that aspect. And then I understood how Chris and Dan had built this amazing foundation that's done so much from the governance perspective. So it's been a long journey and it all feels that it's been coming towards in this awesome new direction. Well, yeah, congratulations to you. And right, CNCF, uh, you know, in, in, in the press release, I see, you know, Dan talked about, you know, you've been, you know, a speaker, you've been a, you know, governing board member, uh, you, you've participated in this, and you're going to help with that next phase. And you teased out a little bit, yes. there's a lot of constituencies in the CNCF. Mm -hmm. there, there's a large, you know, user participation. We always love talking at KubeCon about the people not only just using the technology, but contributing back, uh, the role of open source, the large vendor ecosystem, uh, a lot there. So, you know, give us your thought as to kind of where the CNCF is today uh, and where, it, you know, it needs to continue and, and go in the future. Absolutely. So in, in my opinion, the CNCF is, is a breakout organization. I mean, we're, we're approaching 600 members, of which 142 are end users. So with that number, uh, the CNCF is actually the largest, uh, has the largest 
end user community in of all open source foundations. So it, tremendous progress has been made, especially from those days back in 2016 when we were the third project being considered. So leaps and bounds, so impressive. And I think, you know, and if you think about like what's the end user storyline right now. So the, the CNCF did a survey last year. And so 84% of the people surveyed were using containers in production and 78% were using Kubernetes in production. Amazing numbers, especially since both are up by about 15, 20% you know, year over year. So this move towards DevOps, towards cloud native, towards Kubernetes is happening and happening really strong. Uh, the project has truly established itself. Kubernetes has won, in my opinion, uh, and that's really good. I think now when it comes to the second wave, it is my perspective that the end user communities and the, you know, the, just the momentum that we have right now, we need to build and grow it. We need deeper developer engagement because if you think about it, there's not just one graduated project in CNCF, there are 10. So Kubernetes being one of them, but there's Prometheus, there's Envoy, Jaeger, et cetera, et cetera. So we have amazing technologies that are all gaining um, adoption. Being graduated means that they have fast security audits, they have diverse contributors, they have, uh, you know, safe, good governance. So you, as an end user, you can feel very secure adopting them. And so we have so much to do to expand on the knowledge of those projects. We have so much to make software just better every day. So that's my one one vector, uh, in my opinion. The second up vector, I would say, it has been more opportunistic. Um, as you know, we are all living in a very unprecedented time with a global pandemic. Many of us are sheltering in place. Many are generally life is changed. And what you are in media, you know this much better than me, I'm sure that the number of the amount of digital consumption has just skyrocketed. People are reading that many more articles. People are, um, I'm watching that many more memes and jokes online, right? Um, and what that means is that more and more companies are reaching that crazy web scale that started this whole cloud native and DevOps space in the first time, first place with you know Google and Netflix being D2C companies, just building out what eventually became cloud native, SRE, that kind of stuff. So in general, online consumption is higher. So more and more companies need to be cloud native to support that kind of traffic. Secondly, even for folks that are not creating content, just a lot of the workflows have to more move online. More people will do online banking. More people will do e-commerce. It's just the, sh the shift is happening. And for that, we as the foundation need to be ready to support the end users with education, enablement, certifications, training programs, just to get them across that chasm into a new, even more online-focused reality. Yeah, and I, I guess it, Priyanka, that tees up uh, one one of the ways that most people are familiar with the CNCF uh, is through the the, the events. So KubeCon and Cloud Native Con, really the signature event, uh, been a, a tremendous growth uh, over the last few years. Uh, you uh, actually had involvement in a in a virtual event, the Cloud Native Summit, recently. Um, for KubeCon, yes. the, the European show is announced virtual. Uh, we know that there's still some uncertainty when it comes to the North America show. Uh, supposed to be in my backyard mm -hmm. here in Boston, so we'd, we'd love for it to happen. Yep. Uh, if it happens, if not, you know, we'll, we'll be there, you know, virtually or not. But give us a little bit your experience with the Cloud Native Summit, and you know, mm -hmm. what what you're thinking today. We understand, as you said, a lot of uncertainty as to what goes yes. on. It absolutely, even when physical events come back in the future. We expect right. this hybrid model to be with us for a long time. I definitely hear that. Um, completely agree that everything is uncertain and things have changed very rapidly for our world, particularly when it comes to events. We are lucky uh, at the CNCF to be working with the LF events team, which is just best in class. And uh, we are working very hard every day, them doing a lot of the lion's share of the work of uh, building this amazing, the best experience we can for cloud, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con EU, which, as you said, went virtual. I'm really looking forward to it because what I learned from the Cloud Native Summit online was, which was the event you said that uh, you mentioned that I had uh, hosted in April, is that people are hungry to just engage, to see each other, virtual, to communicate however they can in this current time. 
Today, I don't think the technology is at a point where physical events are, can be overshadowed by um, virtual. So there's still something very special about, you know, seeing someone face to face, having a coffee and having a, that, you know, banter conversation. But at the same time, there are some benefits to online. So as an example, with the Cloud Native Summit, I really, it was just me and a few community folks who were sad we didn't get to go to Amsterdam. So we're like, let's just get together in a group, you know, have some fun, talk to some maintainers, that kind of thing. Um, I expected a few hundred max, thousands of people showed up. And that was just mind blowing because I was like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but it was so awesome because not only were there a lot of people, there were people from just about every part of the globe. That, so normally you have, you know, US, Europe, that kind of focus, or sometimes, and there's the Asia Pack events that cater to that. But here in that one event where we, by the way, we were talking to each other in real time, there were folks from Asia Pack, there were folks from Americas, EU, uh, EU also the African continent. So geo, geo meant nothing anymore. And that was very awesome. People from these different parts of the world were talking, engaging, learning all at the same time. And I think with over 20,000 people expected at KubeCon EU, with it being virtual, we'll see something similar. And I think that's a big opportunity for us going forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. It uh, there are some new opportunities, some new challenges. I, I think back to exactly. you know way back in January, uh, I got to attend the GitLab event, and you look at GitLab, you know, a fully uh, you know remote company, but talking about the benefits of still getting together and doing things online. Right. You think of the developer communities; they're used to yes. working remote and working across different time yes. zones, but there is that that need to be able to get together and collaborate. And so we, we've got some opportunities, we've got some challenges and when do a remote. Yes. So I guess, yeah, Priyanka, I'll give you the final word, uh, you know, things you want to look forward to, things we should be expecting from, from you uh, and, and the CNCF team going forward. I guess, I, you know, I'll mention for audience, I guess, you know, Dan Kahn staying part of Linux Foundation, doing some healthcare things, will still stay a little involved. And, you know, Chris Anazik, who's the CTO, still the CTO, I just saw him, uh, did a great panel uh, for DockerCon uh, with Kelsey Hightower, Michelle Nirali, uh, and uh, Sean Connolly, you know, all people we know that, you know, uh, often right. are speaking at KubeCon too. So, you know, many of the faces staying the same. Not a, I, I'm not expecting a big change, um, but uh, what should we expect going forward? That's absolutely correct, Stu. Uh, no big changes. My first big priority as I join is, I mean, as you know, coming with the community background, with all this, you know, work that we have put into education and learning from each other, my number one goal is going to be to listen and learn for in a very diverse set of, uh, you know, personas that are part of this whole community. I mean, there's the board, there is the TO, the technical oversight committee, there is the project maintainers, there's the contributors, there are the end users, potential developers who could be contributors. There's just so many different types of people, uh, all united in our interest in desire to learn more about cloud native. So my number one priority is going to listen and learn. And as I get more and more up to speed, I'm very lucky that Chris Aniszczyk, who has built this with Dan, is staying on and is going to be advising me, guiding me, and working with me. Uh, Dan as well is actually going to be around to help advise me and also work on uh, some key initiatives in addition to his, you know, big new thing with uh, public health and the Linux Foundation. You never expect anything average with Dan, so it's going to be amazing. Uh, he's done so much for this foundation and brought it to this point, which in my mind, I mean, it's it's stupendous the amount of work that's happened. It's so cool. So I'm really looking forward to building on this amazing foundation by, uh, created by uh, Dan and Chris under Jim. I think that what they have done by not only providing a neutral IP zone where people can co contribute and use projects safely, they've also created an ecosystem where there is you know, events, there's educational activity, the projects can get documentation support, PR support. It's, it's a very holistic view and that's something, in my opinion, new, at least in the way it's done. So I just want to build upon that. And I think the end user community will keep growing, will keep educating, will keep working together. And this is a team effort that we are all in together.
Well, Priyanka, uh, congratulations again. We know your community background and, you know, a strong community uh, at the CNCF. Uh, looking forward to seeing that both in the virtual events in the near t term and, you know, back when we have physical events again in the future. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Be sure to check out thecube.net. Uh, you'll see all the previous uh, events we've done with the CNCF, as well as, as mentioned, we will be helping keep Cloud Native connected at KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe, the virtual event in August, as well as uh, the North American event later in the year. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube.